Hello and welcome to this video about terminal velocity. To remember what terminal velocity means, if you remember that terminal um, means end, you can think of terminal velocity as like an end velocity. And what it is is the maximum velocity of objects falling through a fluid. So it's the maximum velocity, remembering velocity is speed with direction. So maximum velocity of an object falling through a fluid. And we use the term fluid, you need to recognise that fluid can be either um, liquid or a gas. So it could be, for example, the maximum velocity that something gets when it's falling through air, or the maximum velocity it gets when it's falling through water or oil or something like that. So when I think about terminal velocity, I always like to pose this question. I like to say, if a feather fell off of a bird at 10,000 feet, would the feather continually speed up until it hit the ground? And the answer to that is no, it won't, because the feather will reach a terminal velocity. It will be falling through the air, a fluid, and it will reach a terminal velocity. And when it reaches that terminal velocity, it won't be able to speed up anymore. Otherwise, if you imagine this little feather falling out of the air at 10,000 feet, would be like a really super speedy needle falling out the sky. Okay, so thank goodness that there is such thing as terminal velocity. Um, this, as this feather is falling, it will suddenly reach a final speed and it can't go faster than that final speed. If you think back to forces, the forces acting on this feather as it's falling is gravity downwards, or we can call that um, its weight. We'll talk about weight in another video. Okay, so weight, you can either call it, or gravity pulling the object downwards. And in the opposite direction, you will have air resistance as acting as the force against the feather and at terminal velocity when you reach that maximum speed the air resistance and the gravity or the weight pulling the object down are balanced so at terminal velocity you will have balanced forces where weight equals the air resistance Okay. And because of those balanced forces, it can't speed up and accelerate anymore, and it will fall at a terminal velocity. Now let's think about this in terms of a parachute jumper, and I'm just going to number these stages um, 1 through to 4. At stage 1, I'm just going to describe what happens as the parachute parachutist falls out of the plane. So first of all, when he falls out of the plane, Let's think about what forces are acting on the parachutist and how that affects its, its motion. So first of all, initially when it falls out of the plane, first of all, you've got weight acting downwards, okay, or you might see it as gravity, but weight acting downwards and air resistance acting in the opposite direction. Now because we've got um, weight which is a greater force than air resistance as soon as it jumps out of the plane. We've got a resultant force downwards and therefore the man is accelerating. So he's accelerating with a resultant force um, downwards. Okay. However, as speed increases, the air resistance will increase as well. So as he speeds up through the air, you'll get to a stage where you then have balanced forces and at this point the parachutist will reach its terminal velocity. So without a parachute on there is a maximum speed that this parachutist will fall through the air when the weight and the air resistance are now balanced because when you speed up if you increase the speed the air resistance also increases. Now the weight obviously will always 
be the same because that's to do with the mass and the gravity okay so that size arrow will always be the same throughout it looks a little bit shorter there so perhaps it should be more like that and it's the air resistance that will increase now obviously the parachutist doesn't fall like this forever he will open its parachute and that's what i'm going to show you by stage three what happens when he opens his parachute and at this stage again the weight from him will be the same but this time you're going to get a massive increase in the air resistance because you've got a large surface area for the air particles to collide with so you've got the weight acting downwards but then a large force of air resistance and again you get these unbalanced forces and because we've got a resultant force um, in this direction then the parachutist will slow down he will decelerate okay until we get to a situation where again the forces are again balanced and after a while air resistance and weight will balance out and he will reach a new terminal velocity so during the fall there'll be two terminal velocities reached there'll be one when he after he falls out the plane and the forces of air resistance and, and weight are balanced he'll reach a terminal velocity where he can't go any faster when he opens his parachute the forces will again are unbalanced and he will de decelerate until he reaches a new terminal velocity which will be obviously slower than this one over here but with his parachute there will be a new maximum speed that he can travel at. So if we now link in terminal velocity with um, our ideas of velocity time graphs we can draw a velocity time graph for a parachutist falling. And first of all if we call this at time zero when the parachutist falls out the plane first of all he will accelerate and then reach a terminal velocity which will be depicted by a flat point on the graph then he will open his parachute after a while after a time and he will decelerate and reach a new terminal velocity which is shown by a second flat part until he finally lands Okay, and this point here the velocity will suddenly go straight down to zero so you need to be able to recognize these graphs and see what's happening in terms of the motion of the parachutist so you need to recognize that if he's increasing the velocity over time he's accelerating here Oops. accelerating at this point he's reached a terminal velocity Here he is decelerating because he's decreasing speed over time. And here he has reached a new terminal velocity. And at this point here he will hit the ground. Okay. If you link this to your ideas of forces then, we need to recognise this in terms of acceleration, terminal velocities and decelerating. Um, we'll think about the forces that are also happening here. So at this point, don't forget the forces are unbalanced. Here the forces, as we discussed before, are now balanced forces. They become unbalanced again here and when it reaches a terminal velocity again it becomes balanced okay so you need to be able to recognize the shapes of these velocity time graphs and to be able to describe the motion of the falling objects through the fluid if you found this video useful then please press the like button below and feel free to subscribe thanks for watching